If you're just finding this build series and you like what you see on the table, I will make sure there is a playlist link down below in the description and at the end of this video. But without further ado, let's talk about the theory and the hypothesis of taking this horizontal shaft engine and turning it into a vertical shaft engine. Now before we talk about this too much, let's talk about two engines or engine platforms that were created by the same company. One, the Briggs & Stratton 19 to 21 horsepower single, which is probably one of the worst oil splash engines ever created. Oil splash engine. See where I'm going here. And the 18 to 16 horsepower Briggs Vanguard series, arguably one of the best engines that was ever created. But this is an oil pump based engine. This is a splash lube engine. There is so much technology in this that the Flintstones do not know about. Let's talk about this. And we're going to start with this because it is an engine that is sold in both horizontal shaft, like it is now, and vertical shaft configuration. What's interesting about these engines, though, is that if you take the same 16 horsepower and the same 18 horsepower vertical versus horizontal shaft, there are very few parts that do not interchange. In fact, literally everything internal on this interchanges. The only thing that is different are external parts. Now, the one big elephant in the room is this. This is a vertical shaft oil pan. As you can see, it has mounting bolt locations for when it is a vertical shaft. So if I take this and I slide it onto here, plus or minus the fact that it just doesn't want to do it on video, and I place you guys looking down across it, this is a case of size matters big time. Now this is not thicker just to include these feet. The reason why this is thicker is because when it is a horizontal shaft, all of your oil is down in here. So if all my oil is down in here and I flip it on its side, I have to have a place to store the oil. The oil pump has been raised up by an inch and a half. The output shaft where it sits has been raised up by an inch and a half. The retainer for the other end of the cam has been raised up an inch and a half. So that everything below this point fills with oil and acts as a reservoir. What's interesting about this is that there seems to be some argument back and forth on whether the vertical shaft configuration holds more oil than the horizontal shaft configuration. Which is why it is, I'm pretty sure, that this exists. So if you can't fit more oil in the engine, you fit more oil outside the engine. Which is another thing we will be discussing potentially doing with the Predator. But the problem is, this is based on the idea you have a pump. And if we look right here, we'll see this coming in. And that pumps right in here and spews out all across the crank in order to be able to coat everything and also acts as a slight splash lube system because then it comes in contact with the base of the cam gear and that gets all up in here and everything is coated. Now the other thing is, obviously... If we tip this engine over, that carburetor is in the wrong direction. So therefore, if we take this engine and we tip it over, we end up with a different intake and an entirely different carburetor that both fit on the exact same engine block. We've got a 3D printer. This is doable. 
We're not going to change carburetors. We're just going to stick with the original carburetor, but we're going to make an in an intake that allows us to do this. Now, the other thing that is different is that there are other engines that are vertical and horizontal shaft interchangeable. But what is interesting is a lot of them have a different set of heads. So these are the heads off of a 18 horsepower Vanguard. By the way, if you ever want to know that a quick reference rate outright, that 35 indicates that these are 18 horsepower heads. Also, the 18 horsepower head will have stamped out rockers usually. Anyways, but most of them will have two different sets of heads. There will be a set of heads that's made for when it's horizontal and a set of heads for when it's made vertical. A Vanguard does not have two sets of heads. So if I take this head and I pick this up and I hold it right here in the location that it's supposed to be, if this was over this way, then the oil would drain down through right in here and you wouldn't end up with any oil accumulation, at least not much, and life would be good. But if I turn it this way, and I'm using this head as an example because it's very close to the same design as the Predator head. So if I hold it this way, and my oil is coming in through here, where does my oil go? It goes through this little itty bitty return hole. Let me see if I can get this figured out here for you. Right down in there is casted in, right there where that line follows, all the way down through, and there's your oil return right there. Now, why it is that the gasket fill is so giant right in here when the hole is only capable of being in one spot, I'm not sure. I don't know if that was a design revision at some point, but if somebody knows more about Vanguards and wants to throw some comments down below about why that is, I'd appreciate it. So that's another problem we're going to have when we have the Predator. So right now, the Predator is like this. And when we put it over to the side, we really should have a hole that drains back. But the problem is, there's no real place to drain the hole because the lowest spot in the equation is going to be right there where that bolt is. So, I don't know. And then the other problem is, if we tried to drill that hole there, we would have to drill through the entire block all the way down through and hit it perfectly. The chances of getting a drill bit to line up through eight inches worth of that, <coughs> excuse me, is not going to happen. So what I've debated at this point is I've redesigned the valve covers that we've been working on. So as you can see, here's the original one that exploded. We glued it on. We figured out that we needed an oil splash type idea. I'll flip these around so they go in the right direction. And that way. So we've got the first one. We had to redesign it with an oil splash. Then what we figured out was that it needed to be filled in more. So we filled it in more, but then we figured out that this was too far open. So we closed that off and put in a little AB pinhole. And we closed this off and put an itty bitty pinhole. And that gives us our version that we have now, which comes down through and drains. So now the air has to come through this little slit, has a dampening zone. And then it comes out through, and we've got no oil coming out of the filter anymore. It's all happy. But if we look at this newly designed one, this newly designed one goes on like so. 
so that the dampener is on this side so that when this thing flips it's like this but I don't have any ports on it the reason I don't have any ports is because I ordered up let's see what did I do with those oh here we are I ordered up some regular standard pipe thread and tap and die stuff so that we can be able to tap and die into it and put the drain wherever we want. The other curiosity that I'll put here before I move on to the next step is I'm wondering if we can pull these plugs and tap and die through the core of those plugs. I mean, it's not a perfect world scenario, but if we tapped into the plug and then put an oil cooler or something outside of the engine looping back around, maybe add a pump, but then we've got to have 12 volts. I'm not sure. So feel free to throw some ideas because we can't make this thicker without losing what little bit of a shaft we have. I mean, these generator shafts are shorter than a regular shaft, so we've already lost an inch. So, the other part, while we're here, is a lot of people have stated that I should just get a three-quarter inch adapter with the key thing, and then that way I can throw the lawn tractor pulley on here. Well, it's all well and good, except for if I do that, then I've got to make my own pulley. Because a lawn tractor hub has the keyway already in it, a lot like a centrifugal clutch for a go-kart. So, if I have to make my own pulley anyway, then maybe I should just plain bite the bullet and grab a W hub, stuff it on there, and grab whatever W size pulley we want, and stick that on, and just plain call it a day. All right, while we're right here looking at this, this is your standard engine mount plate that's in most lawn tractors. This is the bolt pattern that we're going to need to mount to when we make this a vertical shaft. And that is why it is I posted up a picture where I had made some templates that I could 3D print in order to be able to punch where the holes go. Because I think what I'm going to end up doing is making some sort of bracket that bolts in on the normal mounting points for a lawn tractor engine. And then drill it out so that it centers this with these four holes right in the center. I mean, that makes the most sense to me. Uh, what do you guys think? Alright, we talked about how the best... Briggs and Stratton conversion engine does it. Let's talk about how the worst one does it. This is a 19 horsepower, but basically the 19, the 20, the 21, they're all exactly the same. They all blow up. They all end up eventually overheating and they throw a connecting rod and that's the end of them, because they drop the rod down through, it goes into this cam gear, explodes everything, they turn into a giant maraca. Literally, the moment I find one of these that rattles in any form, I throw it directly in the junk pile. Now, that being said, why do they all explode? Remember the whole really deep oil pan thing? And if I lower you guys down and we think deep oil pan, we've got all of our gears and everything here, we've got an oil pan that goes to here, and we've got this. So this right here is your governor slash splash lube. So if you're ever trying to delete the governor on one of these, you pull that bar and you clog the hole, and then what you do is you cut that nub and that nub, that nub and that nub, and you pull all these metal pieces out, and you leave the splash lube gear. Otherwise, 
when you go to put oil back in the engine, you've got all of this space that the oil goes down into, and this is the only thing that is making any of that oil go anywhere. Now, these things will overheat and explode and rip out connecting rods, even when you don't forget to go and change the oil or check it. They're just simply one of the worst splash lube engines that was ever created. But they do highlight an interesting point that needs to be brought up. Think of yourself either swimming or in the bathtub or something like that. Now, let's pretend the water line is right here. Okay? If I take my hand and I go like this through the water... And then I take my hand and I go like this through the air. Which one takes more effort? Which one is going to tire you out sooner? The water or the air? Now, the answer to that question is the answer why it is everything except for this one little spinny thrower gear is out of the water. Or in this case, out of the oil. If everything is below in the oil, it takes more energy to make it pushing through that oil than it does to push through the air. So this is a huge, huge problem. When we flip this, and that cam gear is sitting right here, on what will be the oil pan. There's going to be no hope whatsoever, nada, of in any way getting that cam gear so that it is out of the oil. So, the question's going to be, how much horsepower loss are we going to suffer by... Having a gear this size splashing instead of a gear this size splashing. That's a real quandary that we're going to have to figure out. Now here's another one for all of you machinist guys out there. Okay? All of you machinist guys out there. Could you potentially make something that, or could we make something that brought this up? Now, what if we didn't try to get the cam gear entirely out of the oil? What if we made a spacer that brought this like down so that in a perfect world, this would sit with the oil right about there. So just the lower teeth of the gear were sitting in the oil. Could we maybe somehow spacer that? But then you'd have to deal with a bearing there and you'd have to deal with a bearing there. So you'd have to have a way to hold the cam and a way to get this to come down. I mean, it, this has a little bit of play. We could drive it up in about another quarter of an inch so or so. So we could space this maybe a quarter of an inch down. I don't know. Getting really into the meat and potatoes of the hell we're about to start trying to overcome at this point. There we go, guys. I think we have hit the information overload to deal with at this point. I've got a lot to do just to be able to get this turned, mounted, and get a carburetor hooked up, which is why we went the route of deleting the governor before we started this. I wanted to have this running really, really good with a governor delete and a tuned-in carburetor so at the moment we flip this thing on its side and it doesn't run good or it does run good, 
then we know exactly how much the pushing through the oil versus pushing through the water is going to play in this build. Thank you for supporting the channel. We'll get working on it.